Okay, resin. This is a clear epoxy resin, back to front, but I'll stick it all at the bottom, and, and a hardener. So basically, it's two parts resin and one part hardener. So what I do is I work with these, I buy them in bulk, I've got plenty of them using for everything, just so I just pour some into there, and I pour this one into another cup. And what I don't use, I'll pour back so it's not wasted. Because if I forget about it and leave it out overnight, then it can get flies in. It's a horrid way for a fly to die. Plus it goes very... Um, that was that one, that was that one. Okay, what I do, I always use spoons to measure it out and I break off the end of one of them and that's the one that goes into the hardener. And then the other one goes into there. And what I do is I'll spoon in, um, I generally do two spoonfuls of resin. Now the resin is always a bit stiffer than the hardener. So my trick, and I was told this by a professional resiner, and I haven't seen it anywhere else on the internet, so it's a good trick. Heat it up. You put boiling water, or just boiled water, and you put your, your resin into there and you'll see and of course you can't see but it will start to bubbles will go to the center and it will start to get it goes more liquidy you know like if you were to sort of put a jar of honey in a bain-marie to make it go runny same process So that melts down a little bit, like that. We'll do it in real time. It doesn't take long because these are a treat to let the heat go through. It just means you have much, much smoother resin. And I do the same thing with that. Although that isn't necessary. Because this is already quite loose. The catalyst which makes resin go off is pushed into activity by heat. So, so I have two spoonfuls of resin and I'm going to add one of hardener. Then I put those out of the way so I don't knock them over. And then I st always stir it with a plastic fork. This is just so that I never forget. So if I see a plastic fork in the pot, then I know that I've stirred the resin. Because it has been known, only two or three times, mind you, in 15 years, but occasionally I've done a whole batch of jewellery and I've coated them in what I thought was mixed resin, only to find out it hadn't got the hardener in. Ugh. Or sometimes it hadn't got quite enough hardener in, and that, in, in a way that's even worse because it's like walking across what I imagine it must be like to walk across a lava, a transparent lava field and get stuck in it. Talk about walking in treacle. It's horrible, you just have to jettison it. It's like, you know, you could just lose a whole day's work doing that. Now, what I do now is I, I stir it a hundred times, one, two, three. Lost count. Okay, I'll stop. And I have another cup which I put that in on its own, and that goes over there as well. Now, I have bought um, these very thin latex gloves. I'm not a one for wearing gloves, which is why I don't have manicured nails. I don't wear gardening gloves and I don't like to wear gloves when I wash up. Not that I wash up anymore, I have a dishwasher. But these are useful and I suppose I should recommend them. But I don't use them, but don't take any notice of me. So I'll take them off because I don't like to wear them. I have these things which are called pipettes and I buy a huge big box of them for about £30, a thousand at a time. And they last for years, they're brilliant. 
and I used to use a teaspoon. I used to put it all my resin on with a teaspoon because it's self-doming resin and it's, hey, I've got the dog under the table. And this table is one of those very strange affairs that us people that make videos for YouTube have to sort of, um, it's basically piles and piles of books with a piece of something on top and a big black Labrador underneath. So what I do is I just soak up, wasn't very successful, my resin like that. And then with these, now with these, one can brush it on and it doesn't matter if you crack it at all. So if I was to find an old brush, just a moment, of which I've got lots, I'm sure. A nice old brush. That will do. Now I can, on the back side, back surface, put this. And if I was going, if it was a flat piece of jewellery, I would do this and it, was na it would naturally dome. But because I want to brush this on, and I'll show you now, it's going to start to tra go transparent, just on one side. See, now I wish I'd got the, um, the glove on, so I think I will put it on, because actually if you do get it on your skin, it's really not very nice. But, there we go. Now I can hold it with impunity. And do the rest of it. And I'll show you. Can you see? Hold on, let me get my hand out of the way. I don't know if you can see, but there's a, it will increase the transparency. And if I wish, I can also add it on the other side. Now I could take a risk and do that now. But what I do is I always rest them onto ceramic towels or sheets of glass and they don't stick. And if they do, then you can just get um, a Stanley blade, one of these things, and um, just gently, I use them all the time, just sort of push it underneath. Um, but the idea would be, I will experiment with this and just see. So I quite like to put it round the edge of it, where it's, um... see I didn't really need those pipettes after all, but this is actually looking a lot more transparent now. Oh, I see now. It's got, you've got three different sort of levels there, transparent and Anyhow, I'm going to go and do all the ones I've done, and I'm also going to put resin on these beads, like that, just here and there, and at the ends, and I am going to wear the gloves, do as I should do. So just, when, if you make your beads as well, you could put the resin on that, and what else can we do? Might be nice to. Um, the ones that I put mod rock on the back of. Put into there. It's always good to use two. I'm going to put resin on the back of these. And hopefully it will soak in. Yes, it does. It soaks in beautifully. This is all preparation. The real fun comes when we start to paint it. But I always like the preparation because some days you just don't feel particularly inspired. And I can't work with colour unless I'm feeling happy in a good mood and inspired. Um, I can always work with sepias and things like that. And they usually make me happy, in fact, because they're so nice. So if you want to catch up and... Um, get your bits and pieces together and make some components. I'm going to call them components. It sounds as if we're in an industrial unit, but you know what I mean. And see what kind of resin you can get hold of and start to experiment. And then we'll probably all go off at different tangents, but we'll see where we end up. Okay, bye.